Hey, Blender Bob here. So you want to know how you can make Blender add-ons with ChatGPT? Well, it's quite simple. Basically, you just tell it what you want and it's going to do it for you, right? Well, let's give it a shot. So I will ask ChatGPT to write a Blender add-on called Crazy, located in the tool tab of the end panel. One field called Name and one button called Go. Once pressed, create a monkey. Name the monkey with the value of the field. Set the location to 2, 4, 3. Set the rotation to the values of the location times 10. Set the scale to a random value for X, Y, and Z between 2 and 6. Set a keyframe on all transforms. Go to frame 10. Move the monkey plus 5 in X. Multiply the rotation values by 3. Set the scale value to 1, 1, 1. Set a keyframe. Print. It worked. And I press enter and it generates the code for me. It's not always that fast, by the way. Sometimes it's slower, but hey, I was lucky today. It went pretty fast. Once it's done, it's even going to tell you how to install it while it's just like any other add-on. So let's go back to the top and you will see there's a little button called copy code. Before installing it as an add-on, I want to try it as a script first. Let me split this and I will use here a text editor. And what we want is to create a new and we're going to paste what we just copied. Execute it. We just need to press the play button and we get an error message right away. Hmm, not a good start. Okay, so how do we fix that? Okay, I don't know why it didn't grab it on my screen, but right under the timeline, you have a line here completely at the bottom of the interface. You can click on it. You will see the error message and it's going to pop this window. So you see the error message here at the bottom. You just click on it, just copy, and then we're going to paste it back into chat GPT. I did just that. I pasted it. It created a new code. So copy and now we're going to try it in Blender. I will select everything, delete and paste the new one. Press play. And now I should get my add-on in the tool tab, but it's not there. It appeared at the wrong place. Actually, it put it on top. And since I pressed it twice, well, it put it in two places. Not good. So you just tell it. It needs to be located in the tab tool of the end panel. And now it's regenerating the code. This is strange, by the way, because I did many add-ons that were located in the end panel and I never had this issue ever. Anyways, okay, so let's copy the code and try it again. Okay, so same thing, select all, delete, paste, play, and now, ha, it's right here. And I already named it monkey, I can name it whatever I want, so let's call it Bob, and create monkey. It did create a monkey, but if I take a look at it, the rotations are wrong because there's supposed to be a multiplication of the translation, but the keyframes are there, you can see it. The rotation is supposed to take the values from the location and multiply them by 10. So ChatGPT apologized and it regenerated a new script. So I've tried many things and then I realized that I'm a complete idiot. It's not ChatGPT's problem, it's my problem. If I take a look at this here, you can see the radian is at 20 degrees. Uh -huh, but that's not what I want. I want the angle to be at 20, not the radiant. Back to the drawing board. Never mind that. Go back, but I want to make sure that the value I will see is the right number. So if the X position is 20, then the X rotation should also be 20. And let's try again. I will call the monkey Bob7 because it's the seventh attempt and I get another error message. Uh, what's going on here? There's no rotation. There's nothing. So let's check the error message. This one here, there's an error at line 36. I don't know what it is. Hey, just fix it for me. So again, I will select it. I will copy it and I will go back to ChatGPT and paste it in the prompt. And this time it's not my mistake. It's ChatGPT's mistake. It forgot to add the import math at the beginning of the script. You will see that sometimes ChatGPT becomes a little bit lazy and it will only output what needs to be changed. But if you have a complicated script, sometimes it's hard to figure out where it's supposed to go. So in this case, you can just type generate the entire script and it's going to redo it for you. Okay, try number eight. Uh, okay, so I got the right degrees here, but it's supposed to be multiplied by 10 and it didn't do it. Okay, now I get what I want, but I also want the rotation values to be multiplied by 10. Version nine. Oh. Is it okay? So let's check it out. Uh, item. Yes, the rotations are just what I wanted. It worked and I got the keyframes. Everything is working as expected. As for the print, it works. This appears in the console once you execute the script. And it's very useful when you want to debug some stuff or you can use it to, for example, say, print the values of the rotation of the subject or, you know, whatever you want. It's very, very useful, especially when you want to debug your scripts. Be nice with the ChatGPT and give it some feedback. 
You may think, hey, it's a machine. What does it care about feedback? Well, no, it's useful because it knows that this code is working. So working as expected. Because sometimes you can say, hey, it didn't work. So maybe they will try to figure out something. Sometimes it just doesn't work. You just cannot make it happen. You try and you try and you try. It just doesn't work. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Blah, 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 blah. Sometimes you need to be more precise with ChatGPT. In this case, I said, make a script that will change the color of the selected object to 010, which is green. This one is not an add-on, it's just a script that you can execute. So ChatGPT is like, okay, you want it green? I'll make it green. I will create a shader and I will change the color of the base color to green. But no, 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 that's not what I meant. If you are in shaded mode here and you click on attribute, and you go into the, 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 the this here, and you can go in the viewport display, you can change the color of the display on screen. That's the one I want to change, but ChatGPT doesn't know that this is the one I want to change. So how do you know which one to change? You go here and you'll see it says object.color. This is the attribute that we want to change. So you just tell it, I don't want to create a shader, I want to change the object.color. Now, if I run the script, you will see that the object.color has been changed. Now here's an example of something a little bit more complex. Uh, this is a model that comes from Polywink. It's a company that will make the key shapes for the characters for Tiki. So these key shapes are similar to the art kit from Apple. But thing is, everybody uses a different naming convention. Apple has one, Polywinks has one, Wonder Dynamics has one, and Character Creator has one too. So I need to work on this. I'm going to create compatibility. So the first button will rename all the key shapes for what I need in character creator four. I blink left became I underscore blink underscore L. The second button will reorder them in the order that character creator expects them to be. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you may try an I blink and you will get a jaw open instead. It will also create other shape keys that character creator expects to get. They don't do anything on the model, but character creator needs them. And here we go, it created all these V underscore this, that, 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 that. All right, all good. And the last button to add compatibility with character creator four is to keyframe the shape keys. So the first one will have a keyframe at one at frame one, everything else at zero. On frame two, it's gonna be the second key shape that will have a value at one, and so on, and so on, and so on. So keyframe button, and it's all done. So now I can move the time slider and you will see the keyframes changing in the list. But you can use ChatGPT for other things than Blender. For example, here I said create a shell script that will prompt me a shot number, then a range, for example, 138, 10, 230. Create a series of folder called shot number, then range, for example, 138 underscore 010, uh, 138 underscore 020, etc. In each of these folders, create one called Blender, one called Renders, and one called Ref. Now here's the magic thing. This is how ChatGPT is intelligent. It realizes that I use three digits, so it's 0, 010 and not 10. Also, in my example, I write 0, 010, 0, 020, etc. So ChatGPT understands that I want the increment to be every 10, not 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. Also, what you need to know is uh, before that I did some tests and I asked it to print the results first and ask for confirmation before creating the folders. And ChatGPT remembers that, so it added it in the final script. So let's run it. You see it asking for the shot number. This is really cool. I didn't ask it to ask me for the, this sentence here, enter the start and end frame of the range. This is so cool. And then it asks for confirmation. Is this really what I want? Yes or no? So yes, this is what I want. I'm just going to press Y and enter, and it's going to create all the folders for me. And it gives me a message to confirm that it's been successful. So if I go into one of the folders, so let's say 205020, and I go LS, you can see it created also the subfolders, Blender, Ref, and Renders. Okay, now that all my folders were created, it's now time to set up Blender. Now, this is something that would be done automatically with Kitsu usually or in your pipeline wherever you work, but I don't have Kitsu ready right now, so I needed something to work fast to do my layout, so I created this add-on yesterday. So, write a Blender add-on located in the side panel tool tab called Tiki Setup. In it, three fields, one button. The first field is called Scene. The second one is called Shot. The third one is called version. If the values of the field two and three are less than 100, add a zero in front. 
so a value of 10 would become 0, 010. The field should be so that I can write a number instead of a slider, because ChatGPT will do this sometimes. It will put a slider for value, but no, I want to input a number. The button is called Go. When pressed, it will create a camera called ShotCam. It will set the render resolution to 2024 by 1024. It will set the rendering to Cycle GPU Experimental. Turn on the denoiser. It will set the render max sample to 128. It will send the path to blah, 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 blah. It's all the name that I need for, uh, for the rendering my shots. So it's taking from the values that I put in the fields. I want to set the render format to JPEG. And later I added, turn on the depth of field on the camera when pressing the button, set the start frame at 1001 and the end frame at 1050. Okay, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to work on uh, scene uh, 210 on uh, shot 10 and uh, it's going to be version 1. Now I press go and let's see the miracle happened. Poongs. So it created a camera. It named it shot cam. Uh, it turned on the depth of field on it. Uh, in the render here, it said the right uh, render resolution. So that's pretty cool. What else did it do? Uh, it uh, changed the start frame and end frame to 1001 and 1050. I can change it to whatever I want later. It changed it to cycle experimental GPU. It turned on the denoising on it. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah, the printing, the path for the printing here. If I expand this, you can see I got the entire path here and all these values come from what I entered here. So I get the right path here. I told you it's not hard coded anymore, so now it takes the values there. And uh, yeah, it's the entire path here. So I get the name, the values, the version, everything comes from the values I input it right there. Okay, now you have to play with it. You have to experiment. You have to try different things. If it doesn't work, please don't send me messages because I cannot handle 30,000 people sending me messages say, hey, how can I do this? And this doesn't work. Please try to figure it out by yourself. All right, sorry. I'm just very busy. Okay, bye.